I'm out here today with a beautiful lever action rifle from the folks at Henry Repeating Arms. This is the color case hardened lever action side gate and 4570 government. I recently reviewed a very similar little carbine in 44 Magnum. This is its big brother. The 4570 government is probably my favorite centerfire rifle cartridge. It's been around since 1873 and it will kill anything that needs killing. Anything on this continent that you want to hunt, the 4570 is up for it. And the 4570 has been used with success even on African dangerous game. The 4570 throws a big bullet at a moderate speed. It's got a trajectory like a football, but it is extremely accurate downrange. You read up a little bit on some of the marksmanship feats that have been done through history with the 4570, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I myself have shot 4570s a whole bunch out to about 1,200 yards, and once you figure out where the bullets are hitting, it's hard to miss with them. The 4570 is a wonderful cartridge, and the Henry is a wonderful platform for it. The side gate is an innovation that Henry introduced to their rifles just a few years ago. It uh, allows you to load and top off the magazine from the side as we're familiar with doing from the old King's patents, but it also maintains the tube loading procedure, which I use a lot. I really prefer to do my loading through the tube load. Also, if you ever need to dump the rounds out of the magazine, that allows you to do that safely without having to cycle them through the action. And if you ever get what's commonly referred to as a marlin jam, where you have a cartridge get stuck underneath the follower, being able to dump those rounds out of the front of the tube is a godsend. So no matter which way we like to load, it's nice that Henry has given us the option of either on their lever action side gates. The most obvious difference between this model and the other models that Henry offers is the finish of the receiver, which is a beautiful color case hardened finish. This is not an applied finish. It's not painted on. It's not any sort of applied finish. This is genuine color case hardening. And as such, no two patterns are exactly alike. So each one of these rifles is unique unto itself. The finish is a little bit dull as were the original color case lever guns from the 19th century. It looks just like it ought to look. The barrel is blued steel in an octagon profile, which really makes it look like a traditional, beautiful old lever gun. The barrel length is 22 inches, and it's rifled at a one in 20 twist, so that is a great compromise to be able to stabilize a wide variety of bullets available for the 4570 government. The lever is finished in blue steel and it's a little bit larger than your standard lever got plenty of room in there to get in there with gloved hands or whatever and it looks nice i like the look of this lever i love the look of the big loop levers like you'd see them in, in some of the movies and things like that but they're not really practical to me they're too big there's a whole bunch of room in there for your fingers to bang around in and stuff like that it slows you down on cycling to action unless you can twirl one like lucas mccain and i can't and i don't think it's a very practical thing to do anyway the lever design on this Henry is perfect. It's just big enough without being too big, and it works wonderfully. The stock is American walnut. It has a decent figure to it, and it uh, is really attractively finished. It's nicely colored. The stock has a pistol grip configuration, and the pistol grip is checkered very nicely in a bordered pattern. The fore end is also American walnut. Nice slim taper profile on it and it is also very nicely checkered in a bordered point pattern it goes around both sides and also underneath the bottom makes it really easy to hang on to gives you a nice positive grip on it the fore end is color case hardened steel as well and it features a sling swivel stud on it there is also a rear mounted sling swivel stud back on the stock also the stock has a very nice rubber recoil pad on it helps to mitigate the recoil of the 4570 which is not really for the faint of heart, but it's not that bad either, especially once you get used to it. The sights are traditional lever gun style, and they'll be familiar with any of you guys who have used levers very much in the past. The rear sight is a semi-buckhorn with a diamond aiming point in it. It's fully adjustable for windage and elevation. It's just a, a very nice sight. It's been working wonderfully for 150 years. The front sight is a brass bead in a dovetail base, and it's uh, serrated on the back to reduce in sun glare. And the brass bead with the semi-buckhorn rear really picks up in a hurry. It's precise because it's small and it nestles down into the semi-buckhorn just like it ought to. But it's pretty fast to pick up and it's easy to see in bright sunlight especially. 
and even in lower lighting conditions like when you get down to dusk on a hunt the brass bead does a good job of glowing with whatever sunlight is remaining these are a good basic set of hunting sights the henry is also drilled and tapped on top to accept a weaver scope mount and uh, also skinner sights makes a wonderful scope basis for these things check them out at skinnersights.com you can get a scope base from Skinner that has an integral peep in the rear of it. It works wonderfully. You can also get a Skinner peep sight, which is color case hardened to match this thing. It looks beautiful up on there with the color case base, especially if you get a little brass rear ring on it. It's just a wonderful sight for these. Or you can mount a scope sight on it as well. It works wonderfully for that. I don't much like the way it looks on a traditional, really traditional looking lever gun like this. So I'm not going to put a scope on this one. And it's plenty accurate with the open sights. Thankfully, there's no manual safety on this rifle because you don't need one. First of all, your main safety is between your ears. Secondly, the hammer has a transfer bar safety built into it so that if something happens where there's a blow comes to the hammer, you drop the gun or something like that, it's not going to set off the round in the chamber because the hammer doesn't contact the firing pin unless you pull the trigger. The trigger on these is really nice. It's a very clean let off, very smooth action, and the trigger really is nice and crisp. The trigger lets loose right at two pounds, two pounds, 0 0.2 ounces on the average. Really nice trigger for this. Makes it easy to shoot this gun accurately. And the accuracy on this gun was also very impressive. I didn't shoot it at really long range because I didn't want to mount a scope on it. When I was paper punching with it, it was easy to keep groups inside of two inches. But I've shot it out to 50 to 100 yards at rocks and things like that, and it's dinged them every time. It's a very accurate rifle, partially because of the trigger, also because it's built very tightly and nicely. The classic load for the 4570 pushes out a 405 grain flat point lead bullet. The old black powder loads cranked out about 12, 1300 feet per second, which is nothing to sneeze at. But when smokeless powder came along, they were able to push a little bit more velocity out of it. The modern approximation of that load is from double tap. It's my favorite 4570 load. I use it in everything. It runs out a 405 grain hard cast flat point lead bullet at uh, about 1800 feet per second. It's a dandy load. It works in just about everything except for trapdoor level rifles. They don't want you to shoot them at something weak like that. introduced their liver revolution rounds back in 2005 I believe it was they really allowed the lever guns to take a step forward in ballistics up until that time a lever gun could only use flat pointed or round nose bullets because you didn't want the chance of a pointed bullet setting off the next primer in the tube so Hornady came up with the liver revolution using bullets that had a flexible polymer tip on them that wouldn't pierce the primer ahead of it. It was a great idea and allowed the 4570 and other lever gun cartridges to shoot flatter and be more accurate at longer ranges. Their 250 grain monoflex is a great moderate load for the 4570. It runs the 250 grain monoflex bullet out to about 2,000 feet per second and it holds a downrange velocity better. Lever Revolution 325 grain FTX load is just more of the same. It ups the power ante just a little bit, propelling the 325 grain FTX to the same 2,000 feet per second. It's a little bit harder hitting load, a dandy hunting load.
The case colored lever action side gate rifle from Henry is available in either 4570 government or 3030 Winchester. The 3030 is basically the same configuration as the 4570, except it has a 20 inch barrel and a straight grip stock instead of the pistol grip of the 4570. They're both great cartridges and they're both great rifles. MSRP on the Henry USA color case hardened lever action side gate rifle, either in 4570 government or 3030 Winchester, is $1,246. For a custom quality rifle like this, with the beautiful finish on it, the nice wood, the octagon barrel, all the extras that you get on this, that is quite a reasonable price, especially considering you're probably going to get some off of that by the time you get it to you. To find a dealer in your area who can get you one of these, get onto Lipsy's website, lipsy's.com, click on their dealer finder, and give them your location and your specified radius, and they'll give you a list of dealers in that area who can get you one of these through Lipsy's. Lipsy's has a nationwide network of dealers. They are a great bunch of folks, and they are really committed to helping you get the guns that you want. Check them out at lipsy's.com, and check out these and Henry's other wonderful products at henryusa.com. done here at the NRA show in Indianapolis we saw a lot of good stuff we're gonna be heading home but uh, uh, you saw a lot of stuff here met a lot of interesting people uh, you know like I said earlier the gun industry is uh, I think they're the best group of people in the world as far as the industry they make good products and, and they try to do well um, here most people know everybody and we just do a forget this folks